Hi there, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, as you know, I kind of had a, a hiatus that wasn't really a hiatus last week. As of, well, not not the posting date of this, but today's date when I'm filming a couple days before, just that whole point in time. Um, it's, these last few days have been eventful, and um, I don't think I'm alone in that it was uh, difficult. Um, but I think it is important to focus on, um, things that we enjoy and make us happy and, um, making things and none of us knows how long we've got to make things and, uh, it's best to make them while we can. So here we go. So with that rather odd intro, I'm sure it's going to seem very odd to anyone, you know, watching this year from now, <laughs> uh, I am going to awkwardly segue into today's video. People fascinate me. They completely fascinate me. I always feel like I'm on the outside watching people and I just don't understand them, but they are so interesting. And I think many of us get that to a degree, right? When you're watching a movie, you become interested in the people on the screen. Um, the people behind the scenes too, but you can't see them and it's a different thing. It's a very odd dynamic and maybe I'll do a video going more into that. Uh, in any case, if you're watching an animated film, then you can get the same deal. Who, what, who are these voices? Who are the people behind the voices? What do they look like? And why does that voice sound familiar? Or as Rocky and Rocky and Bullwinkle would say, that voice, where have I heard that voice? Kids, ask your parents or ask your grandparents. Okay, fine. So this is another thing I want to add to my ongoing series is who are those voices? I have chosen Disney's Alice in Wonderland from 1951 to be my starting point. And so here we are, the entire listed cast. I don't have info on any other minor voices, but really I think pretty much everyone is represented. Let's dive in. Our main character, Alice herself, was voiced by Catherine Beaumont. Born in 1938 in London, she is aged 86. As of the posting of this video, she is still alive. She was born during World War II, and her mother moved them to Wales for safety, and they moved back to London after the war. She appeared in a British film, and Hollywood expressed interest. They placed her largely in small, non-speaking roles, though she did have a slightly larger role in a Jimmy Durante film. She auditioned for Alice and won the part. She also was the live-action reference for animators. She was also the voice of Wendy Darling in Peter Pan, also the live-action reference there. She played Alice in live-action specials around the time the movies came out as well, but to date, this is the only voice work she has done. She has voiced Alice and Wendy for years, until about 10 to 15 years ago. Now, I don't know if people realize how many of the voices in this movie particularly were quite well known at the time. The Mad Hatter, Ed Wynn, born 1886 in Philadelphia. His birth name was Isaiah Edwin Leopold. He died in 1966. He is familiar to current moviegoers through his Mary Poppins role of Uncle Albert. He started his career in vaudeville and became popular through the Ziegfeld Follies. His first radio show, The Fire Chief, led to two movies featuring the character. He was offered the title role in The Wizard of Oz, but he turned it down. He did do fairly well on television, with two versions of the Ed Wynn show, the first being the first television variety show, which sandwiched him hosting the four-star review. His son, fellow actor-comedian Keenan Wynn, I did not know they were related, I've always been a fan, convinced him reluctantly to take up dramatic acting. He surprised everyone, including himself, at his prowess, appearing in, among other things, two Twilight Zone episodes, the first written especially for him by Rod Serling, and The Diary of Anne Frank, for which he was nominated as Best Supporting Actor. The Caterpillar, what a great character he is, voiced by Richard Hyden, born 1905 in Camberwell, England, died 1985. He had many roles in stage and screen, most notably, and then there were none, the Sound of Music, and Ball of Fire, a film I covered in my last video, 15 more classic movies you should watch. 
He directed a few movies towards the end of the 1940s, and he also was a regular on radio, on The Swan Soap Show with Burns and Allen, and The Bergen and McCarthy Show. He wrote a book based on his character, Edwin Karp, from that latter show. A very familiar voice to us to this day. The Cheshire Cat was voiced by Sterling Holloway. Born 1905 in Georgia and died in 1992. I mean, really, who doesn't know this voice? Disney mainstay Holloway also played roles in, among others, Dumbo, Bambi, The Jungle Book, The Aristocats, and, of course, our beloved Pooh Bear. Like so many supporting actors of the day, he worked a lot in radio, appearing on such popular shows as Suspense, The Shadow, and Fibber McGee and Molly. In later years, television was also kind to him, where he could be seen on The Life of Riley, Andy Griffith, and The Twilight Zone. He never married. He stated he liked his life as it was and didn't feel any need for change, but he did also adopt a son. The March Hare was voiced by Jerry Colonna, born Gerardo Colonna in Boston in 1904 and died in 1986. As with Edwin, Colonna was a popular comedian in his day. There might be references to him on a show, or he might pop up randomly in a movie. Either way, people knew who this man was. He was a regular on Bob Hope's programs, with his catchphrase, Who's Yehudi? spoken nearly after every joke, even though it usually had nothing to do with the joke itself. He was a trombonist at the beginning of his career, and he moved from local bands to the CBS House Orchestra, where he developed a reputation for pranks. He was nearly fired for that. But radio comedian Fred Allen gave him recurring spots on his radio show, and things moved on from there. Another bit that became Colonna's thing was his ability to stretch out syllables for a ridiculously long time. He can be heard in a few other Disney shorts, such as Casey at the Bat, and he appeared in many comedy films, such as Star Spangled Rhythm and Road to Rio. He also moved on to television, hosting his own program for one season and guesting on many popular shows. His last appearance was on The Monkees, after which he suffered a stroke and could no longer perform. Also, if you look at both The Mad Hatter and The March Hare, they are heavily influenced by those who did the voices. The Queen of Hearts, yeah, love to hate her. Verna Felton, born in California in 1890 and died 1966. Where do we even start with the amazing and indomitable Verna Felton? When she was eight, her father passed away, leaving her family in financial straits. So Felton joined a touring company and so grew up with the theater. Radio was extremely good to her. She became a fixture in the casts of The Red Skelton Show, and Jack Benny, and of course, the Christmas perennial, even to this day, the Cinnamon Bear. She followed this up with television roles on The Ray Bolger Show and December Bride, in a role she originated on the radio show of the same name. In Disney films, she is best known for her roles as the Queen of Hearts, the Fairy Godmother in Cinderella, and as Flora, the Good Fairy in Sleeping Beauty. But she has also popped up in Dumbo, Lady and the Tramp, and The Jungle Book, which was her final role of all time. The, deep breath, Walrus, Carpenter, Tweedledum, and Tweedledee were voiced by J. Pat O'Malley, who was born James Rudolph O'Malley in 1904 in Lancashire, England. He died in 1985. J. Pat O'Malley started as a singer with an orchestra. He came to the United States, but his singing career did not take off, so he concentrated on his acting. He had a lot of work in early television, including The Twilight Zone and Batman. His voice work also includes The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad, The Jungle Book, and Mary Poppins. In fact, Dick Van Dyke has credited O'Malley as being his voice coach, so this may be the man to blame for that famous accent. The White Rabbit and the Dodo were voiced by Bill Thompson, born 1913 in Terre Haute, Indiana. He died in 1971. Thompson was another very busy radio actor, a regular on the popular show Fibber McGee and Molly. I love that one. His character, Wallace Wimple, was the same voice used for the White Rabbit. Audiences of the day would have gotten a kick out of this. 
He also used pretty nearly the same voice when portraying Droopy Dog, as well as his nemesis Butch, in that well-known cartoon series. In fact, the character Droopy Dog was inspired by the Wimple character. He started on Chicago radio on the series The Breakfast Club. Yes, that's where the name of the movie came from. And this is where the Wimple voice originated. He was a sort of Mel Blanc with his other characters Horatio Boomer, which is pretty much the Dodo voice, Nick DiPopolis, and the old-timer being quite distinct from each other. During World War II, he joined and fought in the Navy, returning to the McGee Show when the war was over. And he also joined the cast of the popular Bergen and McCarthy series. Other Disney work includes Peter Pan as Mr. Smee and several other pirates, King Hubert in Sleeping Beauty, Uncle Waldo in The Aristocats, and five different characters in Lady and the Tramp. He also did voices in several Disney shorts and was the first actor to voice Scrooge McDuck. He was originally cast as the voice of Fred Flintstone, but Hanna-Barbera changed their minds and had Alan Reed step in instead. Alice's sister who was never named, was voiced by Heather Angel, born in 1909 in Oxford, England. She died in 1986. She also voiced Mrs. Darling in Peter Pan. She started in theater helping to support her mother and two sisters after the death of her father, and she first came to America with a touring company. She appeared in several British films and decided to make the move to Hollywood in 1932. There she found roles in The Mystery of Edwin Drood, The Three Musketeers, and The Informer, among others. Today, her best-known live-action film may be Alfred Hitchcock's Lifeboat in the smaller role of Mrs. Higley, a woman who jumps from the boat due to the grief of losing her infant daughter. The Doorknob was voiced by Joseph Kearns, born 1907 in Salt Lake City and died in 1962. Another very prolific actor who popped up all over the place on early radio shows and television. He began in vaudeville and also on a Salt Lake City radio station before moving to Los Angeles at the age of 29. His first serialized role was the Christmas perennial The Cinnamon Bear, in which he played the crazy quilt dragon. Then he moved on to shows such as Sam Spade, Burns and Allen, and Suspense as the host known as The Man in Black. Several people played the role, but he was the first one. His live role film career was sporadic, and he may be best known there as the crime photographer in Anatomy of a Murder. On television, he reprised radio roles in Our Miss Brooks and the Jack Benny program, and guested on many others besides. His last and one of his best known roles was as the cantankerous neighbor Mr. Wilson in the live action version of Dennis the Menace. He suffered a cerebral hemorrhage and passed away partway through the series' run. Kearns was also an avid organ player. He purchased a large Wurlitzer, and he built his home around it. Bill the Lizard, a small but memorable role, was voiced by Larry Gray, who was born in 1895 in Yorkshire, England, and died in 1951. He was a magician who specialized in card tricks and began his career at Coney Island. Later on, his wife, who was a singer, was incorporated into the act. His only other film ever was a live-action piece called Mr. Celebrity. That famed character, known only as Bird in Tree, otherwise known as Serpent, I love her, voiced by Queenie Leonard, born Pearl Walker in 1905 in Lancashire, England. She died in 2002. She began on the stage at 14 in a family act with her father. She then moved on to British films starting in 1931 and went to Hollywood 10 years later. These live action films include The Uninvited, a film I covered in prior movie videos, I don't remember which one, I'm sorry, and then there were none, and Life with Father. Other Disney roles include a brief role as a lady in the bank in Mary Poppins, and the voice of Princess the Cow in 101 Dalmatians. The King of Hearts was voiced by Dink Trout, born Francis Trout, in 1898 in Beardstown, Illinois. He died in 1950. He began with a musical program on radio and moved on to acting roles on The Life of Riley, Lum and Abner, Ozzie and Harriet, among many others. 
His live-action film roles include So Dear to My Heart, Notorious, and Sudan. For Disney, he voiced Boodle the Beetle in several Donald Duck short films. The Rose was voiced by Doris Lloyd, born in 1891 in Liverpool, England, and died in 1968. She began in London with a repertory company and appeared in at least one film. Then in the 1920s, she went to America to visit her sister and wound up staying. She began acting on the stage, but decided to focus on film starting in 1925. She appeared in many, many movies, as varied as Disraeli, The Time Machine, and Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman. Her only other Disney role was as another lady in the bank in Mary Poppins, this being the central lady in the bank who has a few lines and is credited as depositor. The Dormouse, that sweet little guy. This is really interesting. Jimmy MacDonald, born 1906 in Dundee, Scotland, and died in 1991. MacDonald was a Foley artist and musician who was the first head of the Disney sound effects department. Also, he was the second voice of Mickey Mouse from 1947 to 1976. He began as a musician on a steamship line, which led to a recording opportunity with Disney, and soon after they offered him a permanent job. He created many original ways to express sound for Casey Jr. in Dumbo, Evan Rude in The Rescuers, and the dragon Maleficent in Sleeping Beauty. He did the on-screen humming for Kirk Douglas in Disney's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and the sounds for Dopey in Snow White. Other Disney voice work includes Jacques, Gus, and Bruno in Cinderella, Chip of Chip and Dale, and the wolf in The Sword in the Stone. He also appeared in person in Fantasia as one of the musicians. The Card Painters. Okay, for Disney fans, this is really cool. The Card Painters were voiced by a group called the Mellow Men. There were several different members from its inception in 1948 all the way through the mid-70s. At the time of Alice in Wonderland, the members were Bob Hamlin, Bill Lee, and founding members Max Smith and Thurl Ravenscroft. That's right, Disney mainstay and voice of Tony the Tiger, this is where it began. Well, the group did go under different names, and they backed up many popular singers and bands of the day, including Spike Jones, Doris Day, Bing Crosby. As a group, they have done other animation work, including The Hobbit and Horton Hears a Who. But mainly, they did a lot of work for Disney, including Peter Pan, Lady and the Tramp, and The Jungle Book, while also appearing on the television show Cavalcade of Songs and releasing the Disneyland record Meet Me Down on Main Street. You know their recording of Yo-Ho! A Pirate's Life for Me from the Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland and as the singing busts in the Haunted Mansion. And in addition to all this, they backed up Elvis Presley in several of his films. Credited as Other Cards, Don Barkley, born Don with two N's, Van Tassel Barkley in Ashland, Oregon in 1892, died 1975. Not only an actor, Barkley was an accomplished painter and caricaturist. As an actor, he began on stage in the Ziegfeld Follies, and also in these early years was an on-again, off-again roommate with pre cary Grant Archie Leach, with whom he also formed a brief comedy show in New York. He worked frequently in film, with a brief pause during World War II when he formed a one-man USO show and toured army bases overseas. His movies include My Sister Eileen, Thank Your Lucky Stars, and My Darling Clementine. For Disney, he has been heard in animated classics Cinderella as the Doorman, Peter Pan, and 101 Dalmatians. He also showed up in live-action roles in Mary Poppins as Mr. Binnacle, and Bedknobs and Broomsticks as a Portobello Road passerby. For Sleeping Beauty, he was the live-action model for King Hubert. In his later years, though, he mostly retired from acting, due to his caricatures, which were done of fellow actors during downtimes on set, and his paintings becoming so popular that he redirected his career to focus on his art. The White Rose, Norma Zimmer, born in Idaho in 1923, died in 2011.
She grew up in Seattle and wanted to follow in her father's footsteps as a violinist, but she was told her hands were too small, so she pursued vocal studies instead. She debuted on radio in 1947 on the show Sparkle Time and later became a soloist on Standard School. She is best known as the second champagne lady on the Lawrence Welk show post-1960. Also, she did a lot of religious concerts, including ones for Billy Graham, and she also was a portrait painter. The young pansy, that cute little thing, was voiced by Tommy Lusk. Born in Los Angeles in 1947, died in 1990 in an automobile accident. Very sad. Uh, Tommy Lusk is also known to Disney fans as the voice of Michael in Peter Pan. He got the job through being the son of Disney animator Hamilton Lusk. The Daisy and the group of pansies were voiced by Lucille Bliss, Born 1916 in New York City, died 2012. She was known as the girl of a thousand voices. Her mother, after her father's death, relocated to San Francisco in 1935, where she became the head of the music department at the San Francisco College for Women. Lucille became active in radio, appearing on Pat Novak and The Charlie McCarthy Show. Her many voice work credits include The Secret of Nim, The Smurfs, and Avatar The Last Airbender. For Disney, she played Anastasia in Cinderella, both The Mermaid and Tiger Lily in Peter Pan, and she was the singer on the TV commercial in 101 Dalmatians. Last but not least, we have Dinah. Dinah was voiced by Mel Blanc. Born in San Francisco in 1908, died 1989. Come on, it's Mel Blanc. I could devote an entire video to this man. Uh, there's so much info, I'm not going to go into it. The man of a thousand voices. He appeared on the Jack Benny show, the Burns and Allen show, did nearly but not quite every voice on Looney Tunes, and the list goes on and on and on. He was one of a kind and will be sorely missed. Well, I hope you all found that as interesting as I did, because I'm going to do it a lot more. Oh, boy. So until next week, um, hopefully this next week is not as eventful as this past one. Until then, I have my sign-off, which I am poaching from a certain famous person, uh, but it's not copyrighted, so it's mine now. Take care of yourselves and each other. See you next week. <laughs>